Yeah, sure, Rakeem. Uh, how, how do you feel like you did today? What, what were some of the things you maybe were, were happy with? And uh, do you have any numbers you could share with us from today? Uh, no, sir. I, I did not get any of the numbers, but uh, uh, there's some. Only thing I really struggled with today was I think broad jump. Everything else was really smooth. I killed the position drills, caught out the backfield, even in the slot. So it went really well today for me. Scotty? Rakeem, I'm wondering if you could maybe sum up your, your football journey to this point. Like it's been an up and down ride at times, but now you're you're prepping for the draft. Uh, said, ask me that again. Yeah, just kind of sum up your, your football journey. And uh, I mean, I guess up until this point, now you're you're getting ready for the draft. Well, as, as y'all know, I had, you know, my senior year, I had some ups and downs, you know, how, how that went. And so right after that situation, I kind of, well, it wasn't really no situation. It was just like, hey, we came, you got to, you know what I'm saying, you got to get healthy. You know, I, I was dinged up the whole season, just trying to be a tough ass and go out there. And so. And then after that, I think my roommate got COVID, and I didn't even have COVID, and I had to bench game, so I wasn't too fond of that. So that's when I decided, you know, hey, let's go get ready for the pros. You know what I mean? Let's not waste time right here just, you know, landing in the bay. Let's go get ready for the pros. So I ended up, you know, doing that and talking to a coach like that. Like I said, everyone here, no bad blood, none of that. We all still have the same connections as we did as a year before, or you know what I mean? So everyone's still on track. No bad blood, just to clear that. It's hey. Sorry, Scotty, go ahead, Scotty. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I guess just some of the, the points of emphasis in your training, um, I guess, since, since the season ended for you. Uh, I was down in uh, Exos and Frisco, Texas. Uh, we we did we worked on forty stance, uh, shuttle, just basically getting healthy like a, a regular combine program, and they did a lot of things well. You know what I mean? They just they they took really good care of us and you know had us healthy and ready for today. Honestly, Nate. Rakeem, did any of the pro scouts asking you about opting out or do they pretty well understand your situation? I mean, not to be like, you know what I mean? Not to be kind of cocky, but you already, you know what I mean? You already know what, what I did already. I could have left before. So it was kind of like, hey, man, you know what was going on through season. I had these injuries and that was that. Am I healthy now? Yes. So that's kind of some of those deals, people are just trying to really see if I'm healthy. It's, that's the only been a concern is me being healthy. You know what I mean? So your health now, you feel you're 100%? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, Betty. Rakeem, you mentioned your roommate uh, had got COVID what, and you, you were going to miss some games. Was that at the end when you decided to opt out? So you were going to miss games whether you'd stayed or not. Right. And I mean, some games got pushed back, but that wasn't kind of really more of my deal. I kind of already made the decision and I, I ran with it. So and that was that, you know, no one had no bad blood. Like I said, I, I came up here yesterday, talked to Pitt, talked to Coach Browse, talked to my coach this morning, Jimmy, you know, I still, I still get texts from Jimmy. You know what I mean? And just, and Coach Davis, that's my dude right there, Coach Davis, you know. Like I said, all those guys, they kind of knew the deal, mm -hmm. you know, that I wasn't really healthy. That, that injury really took a toll on me that season. So we all in good hands. How difficult was that for you? Were you able to, to still be around the team and, and, and watching, I guess, games on television at times? Uh, it, it, it was tough, you know, because I, I, build, I build a relationship with guys on that team that, you know, that would never be broken, you know what I mean? Like Felipe or Traylon Smith or, or anyone, you know what I mean? It's just like me and Traylon Smith, both from Houston, you know what I mean? We go way back. I had no I had no hard feelings or, you know what I mean? Like all those guys were dudes at the end of the day. You know, it was just kind of, it was hard on me. Like, dang, man, I should be out there with them. But, you 
And you gotta also say, hey, I got these problems going on. You gotta, you know, it's your family or, you know what I mean? So you gotta pick two and I mean, you gotta pick one. Can't pick, can't pick two, can't do two things at once. So that's kind of what I was going through at that point. Just kind of weighing out my options and seeing what's what, talking to people. And, you know what I mean? I got the best advice. Tom. So it sounds like, Rakeem, all in all, despite the up and down season, you don't regret coming back for your senior year. And uh, was there a point, like the A&M game, you had 100 yards, a point that you felt like it would all get back together and you, you could overcome the injury and finish out strong? Yes, sir. But, you know, this I was still banged up at A&M, still doing that. You know what I mean? And, and so, and, and my, you know, my mindset, they, they've always told you I play with a rotator and a labor. You know what I mean? And, I tried to do that and it, it didn't go so well, you know what I mean? So, and like I said, the, the, the whole thing was, it was totally fine, I think. It was just, it was just tough on me not coming back to my team and, you know, the COVID year, I could have probably got an extra year. It was talks like that and, you know, wearing and tearing your body at running back, just kind of old. So what was your November and December like? Is that when you started working out at what point? I, start, I started to get healthy at the end. And then that's when I went to my facility, you know, trying to figure out what's wrong. Or how can I fix this or this and that? Best of luck to you, Rakeem. Thanks, man. All right, let me know if you've got questions in the chat or raise your hand. Rod, if you'll introduce yourself and your affiliation, please. Hey, Rakan, this is Rod Walker with the uh, Times Picayune in New Orleans. And uh, I wanted to ask you something about just New Orleans. I know you were, I guess you were born here. When did you actually, when did you leave? How, uh, do you have family still here? My whole family's from there. Uh, and they, they, my whole family lives there, but my mom. My mom lives in Houston with my one sister and two brothers. And they're the only one that lived in Houston. And the rest of my, my family lives in New Orleans. So, so when did you actually leave? Hurricane Katrina. You left, okay, you left out. Okay. Good. What do you kind of remember about that? Uh, just, man, we we're struggling, you know what I mean? And didn't have much, you know, coming to Houston and kind of starting back over again, starting life over again with no money, no, no car, no anything. So, you know, my mom had to really get it as a single parent. So it, it was it was tough, but I think that's what made me who I am today. Do you ever do you ever get back to New Orleans at all? Yes, sir. I mean, I have times where I, you know, I go down there and might see some family, or but not when I'm playing football. It's kind of hard. Porter, Rakeem, you mentioned earlier about you felt like you had done enough at the University of Arkansas. You know, when it comes to being a pro, do you think that made your decision easier? you know, opting out and that you didn't feel like you had to play injured to move up in the draft. Right. I mean, people know what I can do healthy. Y'all, I mean, y'all saw fall camp, y'all, you know, stuff like that. And really, you know, not to be cocky or anything, I was a thousand yard back. So I didn't feel like, and the year before I almost hit a thousand yards. So I was kind of like, I already showed that I had enough film and I could, I could step up for that level. I was ready for that level already. Even when I came back, I was still ready. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of what I was figuring out. And one of the things going into it, I was like, I'm a thousand yard back. You know what I mean? And that came into play and I ran with it. Jason, if you'll introduce yourself and your affiliation, please. Hey, Rakeem, uh, Jason Butt with the Atlanta Journal of Constitution. Um, where do you feel you you stack up with this this year's running back class in the draft, and what are teams getting, or what would you what do you what would you tell teams that they are getting if they draft you? They're getting a guy that can you know break away for eighty yards at any moment. You know what I mean? And there's there's teams out there that you know might say this and that, but at the end of the day, you know we had you can click on a film and go watch me run the football for, you know, 80 yards or 10 yards and, and see the difference, you know what I mean? It's, I'm still the same person I was the year before, the year after I just, my senior year, I just got a little injured. But I'm a lot of candidates for a lot of teams. 
at the running back position. Amos, if you'll introduce yourself and your affiliation, please. Yeah, Amos Morale with WWL Radio in New Orleans. Um, you mentioned having a lot of family here. Just curious, have they been uh, kind of in your ear a lot or asking you a lot about uh, the Saints and if you've heard from them or anything like that? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, my mom every day, you know, <laughs> my grandma calls. She'll be like, uh, oh, did, did the Saints call or did they call? And, and you know how that goes, uh, um, you know. My whole family from New Orleans and I have Creoles in my family and things like that. So we just kind of like, man, it's whatever team they pick you. I'm ready to go play, you know, whatever. That's kind of what I tell them. I'm ready to go play with any team that, you know, pick me. I'm, you know, 100%. Appreciate it. Rod. Yeah, okay. I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, just kind of going through Katrina and, Going to Independence, um, last chance, you and all that. How, how grateful are you just to be, you know, where you are to be even sitting here today? It was actually, I, I, I posted it on a little Snapchat yesterday. I said, man, I, before I came up here, I said, after all the stuff I done been through my senior year, you got the a and the JUCO, and man, it's, it, it's a blessing to be, you know, able to do what I love and do that to my, my best ability. You know what I mean? I just, you know, I thank the man above for stuff like that. You know what I mean? Just helping me keep going, keep going, keep going. Because obviously, you could ask anybody. You, I mean, you could turn to your kid, anybody know. I, I've been fighting for so long, you know what I mean, to get to this point. And I'm finally here. It's, it's just, you know, a blessing to be at this point, really. Because some, you know, some people don't really get this opportunity to go showcase their skills and show it that, you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a blessing to be in this position I'm in today. How'd you get here? Hard work. You know, I've been, since I was little, I, I had football in my hand. You know what I mean? I, the day I got kicked out of AM, I had a training session that day for about two hours, three hours, just crying. You know what I mean? And not being it, thinking, not being able to. Thinking like I'm being able to think like, hey, I can't go to this school no more, or can't do this. That was going through my head. So, you know, I'm up there crying, training the whole time, about two hours. Foot drills with my trainer, Ro, Ro Kane, out of Houston. We are working on foot, footwork drills the whole time. Working on running back drills. I'm crying the whole time. I can't even, you know, I'm, I'm sweating. I ain't even tired no more. I, I couldn't get tired. You know what I mean? That was kind of the whole story behind that. I got, I worked so hard to get, you know, even here out of Juco, I had to go sit a year, basically inside the jail cell, I felt like. So, you know, you're not getting the right lunch, you're getting cafeteria food, like using middle school again, stuff like that. And, you know, I ended up, you know, putting my head down and working and getting to this point still. Was, was being on the documentary uh, on Last Chance You, did that help you a lot? You feel like just, I mean, what did you kind of gain from that, I guess? I also gained a lot uh, from that. Um, you know, people know me out the blue, man. I, I'll be in the line, I, just hanging out. They'll be like, oh, oh, this is guy from Last Chance You, you know what I mean? But really, you know, when most people say, say that and they, and they talk to me about it, they say, man, you really make, you really make me want to go achieve my goals, you know what I mean? I really make people go out and do the things they never thought of doing, you know what I mean? Because you could quit right now, you know what I mean? You could quit at any moment, you know what I mean? But it's the mindset behind it, right? It's the mindset, no matter what, if you get tired, you got this going on, you got that going on, you still got to do it at the end of the day, you know what I mean? It's kind of it. And my last thing I want to ask you, man, do you know what part of New Orleans y'all grew up in? Uh, seven more. Seven more, okay. My family, my brother grew up in Seven Water. I, I was uh, at Lake at Lakeland Hospital, I think, something like that. And I lived in the Ninth Wall in the East, okay. on Little in Littlewood. So I, I grew. I was born in the East. Me and my little brother. And that's Ninth Wall. Nick, if you'll introduce yourself and your affiliation, please. 
Hello, Team Nick Faribault, Pittsburgh Sports Now. I was wondering, you know, you had that strong 2019, a little bit of a down year in 2020. Is there something that you saw on tape, or was it just really that injury that you think held you back, or is there something you're looking to really, really improve upon once you get into that offseason program, once you get into training camp, and really once you get in an NFL training regiment? I mean, I bet you couldn't get to our fall camp files, but that's nothing to, you know, talk about. But, I mean, these guys will tell you. You know, the people, the people closest to me, they, they know, like, why, they, why I didn't have that season. So, at the end of the day, people, people know, know, like, this, this kid was banged up, this kid. Because, obviously, if I was healthy, it would have been a total, totally different thing. You saw 19 when I was healthy, healthy for two years, 18 and 19. So, I came into my senior season, you know what I mean? I was already banged up coming into the season already just because of the COVID year, how that was going. And so it it was a lot going on. It was just it was really time for me to step up and go get you know go get paid. So that's how I felt. And then I just wanted to ask: Have you had any contact with the Pittsburgh Steelers? Uh, no, sir. All right. Thanks, Hakeem. Hutch. Yeah, just super quick, Hakeem. You talked about all the injuries you were dealing with. Could you remind us kind of what the injuries were that you dealt with this year? I dealt with the, I suffered a bone bruise, Mississippi State, second game of the season after Georgia, and Miss Auburn and tried to hurry up and come back, and I wasn't, I still wasn't ready. And it was gotcha. lingering. I appreciate it, Rakeem. All right, that'll wrap us up with Rakeem. Rakeem, thanks for the time. See ya. Thank you.